We've explored some fundamental aspects of creating PostgreSQL databases. This includes creating the database components, understanding the available data types, and normalizing databases. After such an effort, it is important to protect the database from unauthorized access. In a default installation of PostgreSQL, a database user named Postgres is created. This user has what is known as a super user role. This user is necessary because database administration tasks can be accomplished through this user account. Some of the capabilities of this user include creating databases, dropping databases, inserting records, deleting records, and dropping tables. Needless to say, this user is very powerful and should be used with extreme care. Imagine you are not enthusiastic about any other personal finance tools that are readily available online. Therefore, you decide to create a Postgres database of your own to manage your finances. It will be used to track your bank accounts, purchases, debts, and investments. This database is going to live on your personal computer, which rarely leaves your home and is not publicly accessible. While this database is likely safe, after the initial database creation, you decide to create a user specifically for working with this database. The user will perform operations specific to this database, such as adding records to tables, querying records in the database, and editing records. You might have the need to change the structure of the database by adding a new column or changing the data type of a column. But when such a need arises, the Postgres user is still available for such tasks. Therefore, one of the first things that you will want to do when creating a new, a new database is to create a user or users with database access restrictions. PostgreSQL provides a simple command for creating new users, using the words create user. This command initializes a new account for the PostgreSQL database management system. Typing the command create user, new user, followed by a semicolon, would result in the creation of a new account with the name new user. This new user can create tables in the database that is currently in use when the user is created. However, the user has no access to tables created by other users. We will take advantage of this fact to finally control database access in later parts of this chapter. Let's return to the personal finance database example discussed previously. It is possible that your computer and therefore the database could fall into the wrong hands. User accounts can be secured using passwords. New user accounts do not have passwords added to the account without this action being taken explicitly. The create user command can be modified to also set a password for the newly created user. The format of this version of the command adds the phrase with password, followed by the password's characters enclosed in single quotation marks. In this example, new user would be assigned the password secret. The user can change the password later using the alter user command, followed by the same with password syntax. After executing this alter user command, new user's password will become new underscore password. Now that you have learned how to add new users to a database, let's put this knowledge to use.